Welcome to worship. Today in our worship, we hear the stories of Isaiah the prophet's call to serve God and of Jesus' bidding to Peter, James and John, the Galilean fishermen, to follow him. Our reflection will be given by Martin Cunningham. Jesus calls us to praise and prayer, to song and silence. Jesus calls us to worship. Jesus calls us to hearing and healing, to service and solidarity. Jesus calls us to love. Jesus calls us to advocacy and action, to protest and provision. Jesus calls us to justice. Let us heed the call of Christ. Let us worship together with joy. Let us pray. Holy One, you are ready to meet us wherever we are in our lives, offering vision, interruption and hope where we may least expect it. Surprise us as we worship today with some unexpected grace that will change something in us, large or small, and send us into the world inspired and impassioned to do your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our psalm of the week is Psalm 138. This psalm is in the third part of the book of Psalms, composed at a time when the authors are feeling a bit more upbeat about life. There's a thought that the psalm was written as an expression of thankfulness for the return from exile in Babylon back to Jerusalem and its surroundings in the 6th century BCE. Psalm 138 talks about how those who are close to God are the people who see life as it really is and those who believe in human power live in a world of fantasy. Psalm 138 I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you've exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called you, you answered me, you increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the north shall praise you, O God, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perishes from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Isaiah, surprised by the Holy One in the temple. A vision, a call, a response. Here I am, send me. Weary fisherfolk, surprised by Jesus at their empty boats. A sign, a promise, a response. They left everything to follow. Let us pray to the one who finds us and surprises us. Let us pray. O oh God, you are holy, and deep within ourselves, where our souls touch the ground, where our being meets your being, we are on holy ground and your holiness surrounds us and calls our name. Your holiness is your goodness, your generosity towards us and the silence which waits and hopes and is glad and disappointed and waits. You wait to meet us, to make us holy with your holiness, to make us loving with your love, to make us hopeful with your hope. O oh God, forgive us when we fail to respond to your call with faith. You call to us through the voices of the poor and the powerless, but we close ourselves off from their need. Lord, have mercy. You call to us through the cries of those who struggle to change structures of oppression, but we turn away from their challenge. Christ, have mercy. 
you hint, you invite, you surround us with calls to love you more fully and follow you more faithfully, but we cling to comfort and safety. Lord, have mercy. The call of God, like God's own grace, is new every day. Let us go forward with eyes and ears and hearts open to do the work of God in our world and draw on the courage of God to create with God a just world for all. And so we pray aloud together in the words Jesus taught his followers while on earth, saying, Our Father who is in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who replied, and the host house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the serfs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with the coal and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and whom will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 5, reading from verses 1 to 11. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he'd finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signalled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Good morning, everyone. Both of today's Bible readings speak of men, Isaiah and Simon Peter, who consider themselves to be unworthy sinners in the eyes of the Lord. Having received forgiveness for their sin from Jesus Christ, both gain in confidence, then volunteer to follow the Lord, carrying out his work. 
Isaiah lived seven centuries before the birth of Jesus. In Isaiah's time, the Jewish people were wicked and evil, and Isaiah originally considered himself to be a sinner. Our Old Testament reading portrays Isaiah's call, cleansing, and commission. While in the temple at Jerusalem, Isaiah had a vision. According to John's Gospel, chapter 12, this vision was of the robed Jesus Christ sitting on a high and lofty throne. Christ was served by seraphim angels, heavenly creatures that celebrate the Lord's holiness and require that his servants be cleansed before they serve him. On seeing these seraphim, Isaiah confessed in fear of his own and his people's sinful nature. His main fear was that he, an unclean individual, was in the Lord's presence. One of the seraph angels took a hot coal from the altar and touched Isaiah's lips with it, explaining that this act had cleansed Isaiah of all his sin. Only then, on his cleansing from sin, did Isaiah hear the voice of Christ. Christ asked who he should send to carry out his important work, and without hesitation, Isaiah volunteered. Isaiah had been scared, but once his sin was taken away, he didn't hesitate to respond to God's call. He didn't know what God was asking him to do, but he didn't need to. He just knew that he had to respond. Will you respond to the whom shall I send and who shall go for us call? What's God calling you to do today? If you know Jesus, your sin has already been forgiven. So what's stopping you from saying, here I am, send me? A New Testament reading portrays Simon Peter's call. Simon Peter, like Isaiah, having seen the wonder of God through the Lord Jesus Christ, was overpowered by a sense of an own inadequacy and unworthiness. We too, when Jesus calls us to serve, may feel deeply inadequate and unworthy. Yet like the two ordinary men in our story, by accepting the challenge, we can have our sins forgiven, our own confidence boosted, and we can then go on to be of great service to our Heavenly Father. Jesus used Peter's boat as a pulpit from which to teach the large crowd. And it's wonderful what the Lord can achieve through the use of our own meagre possessions and how he can reward us for their use. While fishing the previous night, Peter and his partners had been very unsuccessful. Yet Jesus told Peter exactly where to find plenty of fish. Christian service carried out by our own wisdom and strength can often be futile. The secret of success is through the guidance of Jesus. Although Peter was an experienced fisherman, he accepted advice from a carpenter. And as a result, his nets were filled. He obeyed, even though he was risking his reputation in front of a large crowd. What a fine example of gaining one's reward through one's humility and implicit obedience. It was in deep water that Peter's nets were filled to breaking point. So we must stop hugging the shoreline and launch out on full surrender's tide. Faith has its deep waters, as do suffering, sorrow and loss. And it's these that will fill our nets with fruitfulness. The full fishing nets began to break and the boats began to sink. Christ-directed service may produce problems, but what delightful problems they are. 
It was while Peter was engaged in his ordinary employment that Jesus called him to be a fisher of men. While we are waiting for Jesus' guidance, we should always try our very best to serve him, because just as a rudder can only guide a ship while it's in motion, Jesus tends to guide the human being who is in motion. On probably the best business day of their lives, Peter, James and John pulled up their boats on the beach for Sukkot and followed Jesus. Are you willing to leave everything to follow Jesus? Jesus will use you. You just have to be willing to trust, obey and follow. What's holding you back? What others think? What you think of yourself? Just remember that with Jesus, all are welcome, including you. On receiving his call, will you follow him? Call of the Disciples. He calls us all to step aboard his ship, take the adventure on this morning's wing, raise sail with him, launch out into the deep, whatever storms or floods are threatening. If faith gives way to doubt or love to fear, then, as on Galilee, we'll rouse the Lord, for he is always with us and will hear and make our peace with his creative word who made us loved us, formed us, and has set all his beloved of lovers in an ark. Born upwards by his spirit, we will float above the rising waves, the falling dark, as fellow pilgrims driven towards that haven where all will be redeemed, fulfilled, forgiven. Let us pray to God, bringing to God all those whose lives are in need of God's touch and love. All who need encouragement on their pilgrim way, let us pray. As the prophet Isaiah rang out, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Empower your church, O God, to ring out the good news of the light of your son Jesus, which pierces even the deepest darkness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As a star rose high into the nighttime sky to draw the nations to the Christ child, send your blessing, O God, on this nation and every nation, and draw the whole world to your peace and truth. We pray for countries in trouble just now, thinking especially of Malawi, Madagascar, Afghanistan and Ukraine. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As John the Baptist guided throngs of people to the edge of the wilderness and baptised Jesus in the River Jordan, we pray that you would guide our country and our leaders to the ways of justice and righteousness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Like the Magi who travelled from afar to bring gifts and celebrate the Saviour's birth, 
We pray for those in our community who celebrate their own birthdays and anniversaries at this time. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus climbed the mountain top and proclaimed blessings on the people of the world, we pray for the sick and the distressed, the poor and the lame. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus called his disciples to leave their nets and boats and follow him, we pray for those we love and for those who have now followed Jesus into your heavenly realm. We know they are now at peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We know that the Lord Jesus, light of the world, hears our prayers. May he make us reflections of your light, O God, that the places of darkness in our world would be pierced by that light and all nations would be drawn to you and be overwhelmed with joy. Amen. Once again, it's been a privilege to share worship with you. This week, may we know the calling and guiding of the God of love in our lives, upholding, enfolding and empowering us. And now a blessing. Here we are, O Holy One. Send us into your world to do your justice, to witness to your vision of grace and to follow you with courage into your transforming reign. This day this week and forevermore. Amen. Amen.